Darkcast Network. Welcome to the dark side of podcasting. Welcome to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. And I'm your host, Alana. <laughs> I'm Kelsey. And we are here today with some panic at the <laughs> Satanic panic Disco. Panic at the Satanic Disco. <laughs> you like that? We did. <laughs> uh, We're sticking what's to it. One of their songs. What Thinking. episode is this? 135 i think with our new number system <laughs> correct i'm like i should okay. get this welcome what? to episode 135 rup, rup, rup. scratch that <laughs> reverse it make it sound more rup, 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 rup. <laughs> insert number here <laughs> you know if you've been here for a while you guys know that we are Alana and Kelsey, and yeah, sometimes things don't go as planned. <laughs> That's such as the podcasting world. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> we didn't know if we were going to be able to record today. I yeah, it was very to last minute. Kelsey's schedule, <laughs> and like forgot that yeah, that we were, it was a D and D weekend, and then it was like, oh shit. Well, when are we going to record if we didn't record Friday night? Because like I wasn't ready then either. Anyway. It's yeah. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. So. Saturday. <laughs> uh, but hopefully it's Friday wherever you are, because I love all those people that listen to it the day of. And I apologize for last week a when a double draft posted accidentally, I guess is yeah. what I'll say. I had <laughs> to delete. like we had two episodes. <laughs> I had to delete the other one because when I was trying to make what? our posts <laughs> pull from like the audio from Spotify for some reason the the proper one that was, should have been there kept disappearing and then I'd like refresh the page and it'd be there again and then I I would go and then it'd be like it couldn't pull through I'd like click in to like view that episode oh. and the description and everything and it would disappear again it would be like page not found and I was oh getting mad so I went God. in I had to like remake it or I had to go in, add a couple like spaces or something so that it would re let me save that one, that episode. Uh, and then I had to go in and just completely delete the other one because I was like, I don't know what's going on. It kept Are you shitting me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, because it doesn't let you make an episode draft without scheduling a date for publishing. Yeah. Now. So I, I had scheduled whatever yeah. i made a draft of an episode the episode and then I, I guess kelsey made one and didn't see it but then you you had put like actual show notes and like started yeah. it then put your audio in it already so i'm like oh shit like yeah okay well you know get rid of the other one but i forgot to hit unpublic undraft i don't know what the hell would you hit like revert to i think you just have to delete it like completely because yeah it yeah because it makes you schedule it yeah so like weird. you it used to be able to you could schedule it or you could just save it as a draft until you exactly. want to like actually go in and publish it now you have to hit publish now or like schedule publish that's your only right. two options so yeah so i forgot it was still there just an episode without any real audio content in it just that, an intro like, and an outro 11 people <laughs> nine or 11 people listen to so thank you for the plays but i know they must have clicked on it and then i'm like oh what happened <laughs> yeah oh my god anyway Funny. one of these days maybe we'll be able to um make the leap to a bigger and better podcast platform uh yeah i've been trying to look it up it seems kind of complicated <laughs> once you have an established show and like to transfer your episodes it's not just like because uh, you have to like transfer yeah. your RSS feed and everything. You can't just all yourself start you do it all yourself. Yeah, yeah and you than... can't just start posting on like a new thing because oh. then like your RSS feed or whatever that's separate. I guess has to be. It's like crazy. 
taken from one service to the other so you have to like transition it or some shit i don't know i was trying to look it up one day and i was like this hurts my brain i can't do this right yeah now. yeah sometimes other podcasters talk about things and i'm like i don't know yeah you guys talk about how it was hard to figure out it sounds like you're talking like audio engineer jargon yeah like, i have no idea what you're saying <laughs> uh, people yeah. are like i want a soundboard i'm like can't we just use sound effects on our phones? Do you need a big, like, I think Pat, yeah. like, technically what Pat has, like, he has a mixing board, but maybe yeah. a soundboard is kind of like that, that you plug in, but also has all the, the different sound effects you can do. I, I mean, we know. could get a, a shitty electric keyboard and just <laughs> have, have some great make, music. Yeah, make the sound like Ross did with his little keyboard yeah. that he was like nobody's ever heard this before yeah he was really really nervous to play it and then it's just like a whole bunch of random noises boom <laughs> he's just like i do not remember that very well oh but my god yeah. he's horrible it's <laughs> he's probably because TV. i just i just hate ross so I'm one of those people <laughs> i yeah he does have his funny moments though um when he can't fit on leather pants after some good lines pivot <laughs> comes to mind yeah <laughs> and my sandwich <laughs> and the one where he has to put his hands to make the keep it down gesture but it doesn't obviously translate on the podcast as well but oh like the yeah hands the flat I hands and then the, can you just <laughs> keep it down <laughs> i remember that yeah <laughs> i think and my friend anita she's funny she's uh, near to my mom's age and she's doesn't take no shit from anybody and people being loud in our office area the other day they're not and they're from like upstairs they don't even work there they're just bah, bah, bah. and she was all so I popped my head up and can you just <laughs> give them like, the, like yeah. shut up oh my god she makes nice. me laugh <laughs> anyway we were just saying there's shows that don't have banter but that couldn't be us uh, no <laughs> evidently no well no and at least we get some of it out of the way first like kelsey had a pretty good week i think we have not yeah. talked a lot but no major issues <laughs> no <laughs> it's been <laughs> very busy at work but good. yes yeah yeah same here same 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 start of the shortest month and we have the most amount of vehicle registrations to renew we're like great shortest month highest number yeah. of plates to put through <laughs> yeah they need to like re redo the the calendar <gasps> or something i know they have to divide up the different months have to take on letter like m and ma because there's so many like mcdonald's Jeez. and whatever is oh. all the same hmm. <sighs> all i know is the ones that renew in December spell meow, M E O N W. <laughs> nice, I like that. Meow. <laughs> and I'm P. My last name starts with P, so obviously I re I do I renew in November. And I haven't I got knock on any wood, knock on any wood, knock on wood, <laughs> any freaking photo radars since I've been taking the faster route. Oh, so. good. I'm hoping this year I'll, it'll be much cheaper when I go to renew my registration in November. Yeah. <laughs> Mine renews in January, so it's like first of the year. Oh, it's yes. like easy to remember. You see, Yeah, you said you had to do that before you went on your trip, I think. Yeah. yeah. Didn't want to have to worry about it when I got back. But... No. You're not on the auto renew then, clearly. Not using No, I don't services. like it. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's one less freaking thing for me to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to help Alana out. Well, because people don't update their shit too. They're like, I thought this plate was going to renew automatically every year. We're like, yeah, but then we emailed you that your credit card was out of date on file. And they're like, See, that's so I haven't had registration I... since last year. But that, that would never happen to you because with. you're not that kind of person. Those are stupid, unorganized people that don't that don't think, wow, I didn't get any registration in the mail this year. I wonder if my plate's been valid. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Hi, Gordo. And then people that, like, like we have to call them now 
when there's fails and we, and they get the email, now there's a follow-up call that we schedule. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're calling people and we're like, okay, so this is for this person's plate on file. And, oh, that's my daughter. Like so many people, it's just like with the membership, they have their adult children and they're uh. like paying for their shit or they're on their membership. And <laughs> you're like, Lovely. she's 40. <laughs> Oh my god. Get your shit together. Oh yeah, this one lady was literally bitching that she like pays for her daughter's everything. And then I get off the phone and I was telling my friend Kelly and she goes, I know how old is she? Like 41? And I looked and I was like, oh my god, yeah, she's literally in her 40s. <laughs> like that is so sad. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Rant over. But no, we do work regular jobs, so you will hear about them yeah. from time to time unless you all join on Patreon. All 10,000 of you who've ever listened <laughs> yeah i need Whatever. a lot more people than that i'm on medication that's so expensive y'all oh. i <laughs> the my medication ain't all it cracked up to me <laughs> no but if if i quit my job it means i'm not qualified like covered to get it covered oh, by the yeah. company anymore so like by the mm. uh private insurance company uh so then I lose. You're right. Coverage. We'd have to make our own company before we'd be able to, like, yeah, have, like have healthcare, like valid healthcare benefits. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. My one medication is like over forty thousand dollars a year. So. Oh, nice. And in the states, yeah. you'd be like, great. None of this is covered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I probably would have died ten years ago if I lived in the states because it just, oh it's cost over. I don't know. You could probably buy at least a very nice house in Canada and a gr oh, probably a million dollar house in the U.S. for how it, how much it's cost to keep me alive for ten years. <laughs> Sorry. Um, or if so, you lived in a different century. Yeah, I would have just died. It's so much fun. <laughs> the, Even the fifty years ago, years. I probably would have just died. Like, give her some leeches and then uh, try yeah. the. Uh, Oh God! What was it? Someone said they gave it, and Claire on Outlander was shocked. Cocaine. Oh, I would say mercury. do some cocaine about it. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. I'm like, I don't know. I originally heard that on Wine and Crime. I don't know if that's where it's yeah. from. That the, there's ghosts Maybe. in your blood. <laughs> oh yeah, mercury. They treat them with mercury. Things with yeah. blood. Oh, let's bleed you some more. <laughs> yeah, that should help. Then give you some cocaine, maybe some alcohol. <laughs> uh, an enema. Gordo. Oh, yes. Let's do old, <laughs> old timey um, quack cures that kill people for one. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Patreon yeah. episode or something. Mm. People like the medical mystery ones. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What is your case? We didn't even say what we're doing. This is, I guess, satanic. satanic panic at the disco. <laughs> Sorry, like 18 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Where do, okay. Okay. Oh, yes. But I don't know if we said um, it is a Patreon. It's a fan picker, a very special fan picker episode picked by yeah. my very own Pat. <laughs> yes. It would be fun. Um, it was. I mean, he kind of lived it. through that era, so uh, yeah. And then he was like, "Oh, and then Kelsey might want to do I don't know, but like he thought you might want to do the musical industry side of it because yeah, yeah. He's interested in music. I don't know. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> I I thought it was interesting. I ran into like a few different things that happened that were cool. Well, not not really cool. I mean no talk, but <laughs> right um, i guess i mean that we're interesting to look into it's like oh i didn't oh, yeah. like i'd heard of that before or i know about that but hadn't heard the history yeah. of it no no one ever says any specifics it's always just like ha 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 playing rock music backwards and it's evil yeah la 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but you never know the rest of it like yeah. yeah some stuff it did bring up i found what did i find it was some good sources there was a heavy blog is uh i really liked them they had <laughs> interesting name <laughs> yeah it was actually a heavy metal 
heavy metal like music website and their oh, writers cool. like compose this huge really long history about like the war on heavy metal music wow um, that yeah. would be a pretty interesting read i bet and then there was uh some information from vice.com uh some from the guardian Ooh. And that there was like a little student newspaper I ran across that had a thing that was a headline that said "Sympathy for the Devil: A Brief History of Music and Satanic Panic." Uh, I was like, "Ooh, I like Sympathy for the Devil." That's a uh, it's a Rolling it? Stone song. song. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I was like, "Who is that?" Thank you. <laughs> I was just yeah, thinking Rolling I... Stone magazine too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. I think it's gonna that's gonna be interesting. Um, I do have some things. I wasn't sure if you were gonna mention them, so you might touch on like a few things. I feel like there's a bit of overlap between. Oh, we I tried to stay away, but yeah, there's plenty to talk about. So yeah. <laughs> uh, but what I did run across starting out was that the Church of Satan actually was founded in 1966 which I didn't know. I would have oh. thought it was like older, but it was founded yeah, yeah, by... Yeah. Sounds recent. <laughs> right? Compared to a religion, I guess. Uh, yeah. Most other religions, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It was formed by Anton LaVey, and he declared mm. in 1966 that it was the first year in the age of Satan. <sighs> Just okay. fun. If you actually <laughs> look up... Uh, the beliefs of the church of satan they're all quite reasonable uh yeah i've heard that before yeah if you actually look up like their their commandments or whatever you want to call them or the rules they live by it's it's actually not that bad it's not like uh, the opposite of the ten commandments or anything no i don't No, <laughs> no it's actually really good uh so with this founding of the church of satan all of a sudden there's this huge shift in societal attitudes uh, as this once feared belief system of like believing in Satan and stuff is now kind of being more prominent in the public and that people are actually kind of starting to do it or like encouraging others to follow them in the movement. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the founding of the church itself, it resulted in attracting some rock stars and celebrities who also helped to bring the movement more into the mainstream which obviously like pissed a lot of people off yeah it's yeah like, yeah get celebrities just like scientology uh, follow on <laughs> taylor and she more people will come oh yeah and then there's uh people say his wife looks like taylor swift i think and oh really I think it's anton i think it's anton levey yeah i don't I, know oh. i did not even look him up i should have <laughs> I didn't yes, have a lot like specifically no. <laughs> about the Church of Satan. I just had a couple paragraphs. Right. The rest were about like the music industry. So yeah, I it has little to do with the panic, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Strange. the Church of yeah. Satan was just one part of like multiple of these counterculture movements that started happening in the sixties. Uh, more so than ever, people were starting to stand up for different rights and even their rights and music was beginning to play like a huge part of that uh okay yeah so like civil rights movements the civil rights movement was ongoing uh rock and roll music was really starting to become very popular and then hippies were starting to spread their message of peace and love <laughs> summer of love baby yeah <laughs> what a and... time <laughs> Right? The Church of Satan was just another way for like certain groups of people to express themselves and a reflection of some people rejecting these traditional values, um, which seemed to be like they said the 60s was like one of the biggest times of people rejecting like the norm and traditional values. So this was just one avenue people okay. chose to do that in. Um, other people yeah. were like hippies or uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Or like getting right. really into like fighting the war and yeah, and, often yeah, and backlash against wars and stuff for sure. Yeah, like, why are we doing all these things? Because <laughs> they tell us yeah. to. <laughs> exactly, just questioning a lot of stuff. 
Yes. How many wars gave us taxes and other bullshit like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so these traditionalists or people that didn't want anything to change, they were very upset with what was going on. And they were trying to do all they could to instill like this panic and fear of those who associated with the church of Satan or anything out of the norm, really. Hmm. Um, a couple of the things I ran across, which these, it won't be too surprising, but some of the biggest in the music industry that they had targeted before, because this wasn't anything new, uh, included jazz music in the 1920s. Um, uh-huh. That had a lot to do with like racism and everything. And right. um, they viewed it very like derogatorily that if you enjoyed it, you were uh, like lesser and right because black people (laughs) yeah right which really sucks like i myself don't like jazz music but i feel like in the 1920s it was huge like jazz music i feel like it was the 1920s yeah and i think we birth to a lot of those other like you know you couldn't if we didn't have jazz maybe we wouldn't have had rock and roll and all those other yeah that's what they say yeah yeah i don't know it's yeah it's got its place i guess (laughs) <laughs> my aunt uh my aunt really liked jazz music i i never got to do it i can't do it but it's okay yeah maybe it's associated um, with a lot of like elevator music and places like that yeah i don't I know, know. <laughs> uh and then like going kind of jumping ahead the next i'm sure there's more in between but the next that really i feel like stands out the most is probably elvis presley in the 1950s those hips you know ever heard of him (laughs) yeah everybody had a had something about his hips uh (laughs) too too much thrust in pelvis yeah yeah they wouldn't like show him on tv from the waist down yeah oh my god um so that he was probably the next biggest music uh or artist uh and then some stuff was talking about the rolling stones in the 1960s uh, I think I have like what your mm. sympathy for the devil even came out that song, because uh, there was a huge backlash for that as well. Oh, because it says devil and sympathy for him. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute just to, just to be like, okay, yeah, well, it's kind of right there in the title, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're like, he's getting a bad rap. Come on, these Christians are coming for him. They're on a crusade. <laughs> uh, another huge thing that occurred that like really instigated this was the public panic when charles manson and the family were caught and then the fact that they had written like helter skelter um the song by the beatles in blood at the murder scene um that really um freaked people out and uh made music even more forefront in like how it could be involved in murder or maybe influence people right so it was a song like first and then he yeah, there's a the song, song Helter title. Skelter. Um, okay. He says I mean, a lot of just, stuff about the Beatles. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Because he, he was a, a fan of the Beatles. Um, mm. Yeah. And then he was trying to say that, like, the White Album, he there was, like, subliminal messaging and stuff in it that told him that there was, like, some people say that he was saying there was like this big race war that was supposed to be coming and he was trying to right help and stuff and he thought the beatles were talking about that in that one yeah oh they get accused Uh, of a lot of hidden messages (laughs) yeah (laughs) having to Uh, like people being dead and yeah (laughs) yeah uh Mm -hmm. so suddenly like with this obviously it's one of the craziest things that's ever happened like charles manson we still talk about him now um, yeah. But back then in the 1960s, this just freaked people completely out. And suddenly the Church of Satan um, or their members weren't the only ones to be feared. And the public really began to pay more attention to the music and possible hidden messages that could be heard. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And people yes. claiming that. <laughs> the fun um, stuff. <laughs> a little bit of background. I thought this was just interesting too because some of the articles talked about it was that more and more parents at this time were getting divorced 
um, and with many oh, women now okay. becoming single mothers um, and looking after the kids or even going to work themselves, oh, there was less and shocking. less of them at home to mm -hmm. like stay and watch their kids after school um, That's true. and yeah. monitor. It was harder to monitor what they were doing um okay yeah so yeah. the fear was like more so than it had ever been before but like what are your kids up to do you know where they are do you know what they're doing oh um, yes it's nine o'clock do you know where your kid is <laughs> yeah, All those because of like slogans. <laughs> yeah you're a single mother or like you're going to work and stuff it was more so than ever before um, yeah less traditional for sure yeah uh there was also a <laughs> Sorry, I saw his little foot. <laughs> I know. You're still in, you can still be in my way, even if you're not in the mic's way. Um, <laughs> then He'll in, be in your way. <laughs> in uh, 1980, there was this faux autobiography, um, which I, I had remembered hearing about this. I didn't know this was actually a faux autobiography from the beginning oh. um it was released by a psychiatrist and his patient who later ended up becoming his wife uh oh. entitled michelle remembers um, i have heard of it <laughs> yeah uh That's, it yeah <laughs> yeah it detailed like a series of ritual abuse claims on kids by daycare workers um and it was attributed to cults which helped reinforce the fears of those who took the book as to be true um like they basically came out a few years later and said it wasn't true but by then you know it's like clickbait people have latched on right i will yes i will talk about that the book a little bit more because yeah she, okay she... good because that's all i had on that <laughs> okay okay yeah i'm like Perfect. yeah that's kind of but i also have uh, to expand on that yes okay awesome <laughs> yeah it came up a lot in my research. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in the 1980s, like, there was multiple murders that were, they were starting to be described as ritualistic in nature. Uh, right. And part of, like, worshipping Satan or, like, sacrifices, I guess. Um, Always with the sacrifices. Usually babies and animals, right? It's yeah. you go for the most salacious things I can think of. So many of these supposed murderers said that they were told to do it or felt like they needed to and while investigators were searching for motives many investigators relied on this satanic panic fear that was going on and started looking into like who the murderers were fans of like who, what kind of music they listened to and uh -huh. as a result there was many bands including rock and roll and especially heavy metal bands that ended up being blamed for influencing their listeners to commit murder because they're yeah. finding some correlation and they're yeah calling it just causation of well like crimes. i mean <laughs> if they don't really know what's motivating probably in the 80s they didn't know a lot about what's motivating you i mean they barely had the what the word serial killer yet or anything and like yeah. john douglas and everything starting to research with the fbi about what all that kind of stuff so we i'm sure we can have trying to figure out why a 16 year old yeah. would like stab their parents would be kind of unreal yeah. to try and think about in the 80s mm -hmm. yeah i think some people had common sense but but like nowadays we just we know a little better too <laughs> yeah yeah um so this was reinforced in 1988 when Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo, yes. Geraldo. Geraldo yeah. Rivera. He ended up releasing a documentary uh, entitled Devil Worshipping, Exposing Satan's Underground. <laughs> which Okay. I, I can picture it, I him. Yes. Doesn't he have like the crazy mustache and like all that shit? Apparently, yeah. yeah. He was a big old news guy. and yeah. There's some song that he he thought he knew where Al Capone's secret stash of money was, and it's like it wasn't in the vault, but it wasn't Geraldo's fault. <laughs> so, oh my god, so I like it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know much more about him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, 
So this documentary uh, depicted metalheads as blood drinking, grave robbing, uh. sacrilegious <laughs> hooligans, um, according to that like, metalheads. That was from the metalheads wow. website. So I was like, okay, I was like, I kind of love that hooligans. Right. Uh, I love the word <laughs> hooligans. Sounds like a metal lyric already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hooligans. <laughs> Uh, it also discussed a series of murders that had been linked to devil worship, um, mm. with many of the perpetrators' mental health and home lives often being ignored, as well as any of like their drug use um, and stuff. Okay. So they basically skipped over <laughs> any other motives or things that could attribute right. tri- and were just like, it's because they listened to heavy metal music. Yeah, n- none of these other mitigating factors or uh, nature yeah. and nurture and influence. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> yeah, someone uh, to blame. <laughs> yeah, the next thing to get blamed uh, was MTV <laughs> for MTV. Oh, no. Okay, when I was a kid, uh, <laughs> every day after school, I would just put on MTV, and every day in the summer. Oh uh you could probably ask my mom she would be sitting there reading magazines and it after her daily talk shows were done like oprah and then like dr phil and mm, then dr oh, oz no. and all that stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah after yeah. all the of that ones. was done i would get to watch tv and i would literally just hit to mtv and it, i would just watch <laughs> the top 20 music videos it would be like three hours long and it would just play on loop and then the next thing would be like the top 40 and then uh, it's just play on loop and that's and i would I'm... just put it on in the background all day long i just watched mtv i don't think all I we did. got mtv i remember watching much music maybe you guys had more channels than we did <laughs> oh i think we had bunch music too i would go back and forth between the two and whichever one was playing music videos i would just flip to it so mm. yeah this music stuck is with like me. canadian yeah yeah, yeah. This stuck with me um, because okay. in 1981, MTV <laughs> was introduced. It's first started. And Damn, 81. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Music videos were starting to be broadcast. And these often included uh, uh, symbols associated with devil worshippers, uh, <laughs> which included the number 666, <laughs> inverted crosses, and pentagrams. Uh... Um, because oh, of poor pentagrams, <laughs> <laughs> poor maligned pentagrams. <laughs> uh, because of those petitions across the U.S., uh, ended up successfully banning MTV from being broadcast. Um, I don't know how many of these petitions in total worked, but one of them worked in the state of Virginia, and it stopped yeah. MTV from being broadcast to like fifteen hundred homes. It was banned. Oh my gosh, Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, and... nope, we're having none of that. <laughs> right. Mm. Uh, and if you didn't get like successfully banned, there's heavily edited versions of music videos, um, which I remember okay. seeing. I remember sometimes looking them up on YouTube and being like, oh, this is different than what they show on TV. <laughs> it's like the t- for TV movies when they like yeah. bleep it out or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, So these heavily edited versions of music edited out a lot of sex, violence, drug use, or negative depictions of certain societal groups. Some some videos would be nothing at all. Yeah. (laughs) It's just complete blackness. (laughs) Got too banned. (laughs) Nothing. It's just like, and and credits. Uh, Oh, oh, the Chili Peppers had some some wild ones i like yeah. some of the ones for, that Probably. came out yeah when californication came out i remember i was still watching well there still was a lot of music videos then whereas now you yes don't it's all just youtube them. yeah if you don't yeah. look it up on youtube you probably don't see it yeah or even realize no. that there would be a video mm-hmm. yeah yeah because i think pat will talk that metallica still does some cool ones but yeah he loves metallica yeah. so <laughs> Clearly, he's a Satanist. <laughs> and you heard it well here, folks. Well, by uh, that degree. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, these edited versions were shown, and eventually MTV agreed to play only the unedited versions of the videos in their late night slots. So nice. after a certain time. And this led oh, yeah. to the creation of what was called the Headbangers Ball in 1988. 
which I kind of oh, love. I think yeah, that's, that's a fun. cool name. <laughs> yeah, so after like a certain time of night, it would like switch over to the Headbangers Ball and then they'd play all the unedited versions of the videos. Ah, uh, it's like yeah. the late night cable that yeah. gets porny pornier <laughs> as the night goes on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> getting into some of the I guess like crime cases i don't have a lot of details on these because i didn't want to focus on it uh yeah we didn't know if that could be like because that could be its own episode yeah exactly um so these are some of the (laughs) um music related satanic panic cases that happened i thought these were like they were some of the ones mentioned the most often or i think the most interesting um there was one where ozzy osbourne appeared in court via satellite Um, he was being asked because there was a trial for 14 year old Thomas Sullivan, who was a Black Sabbath fan and had stabbed his mother to death. So like Ozzy is like fucking satelliting into this kid he's never met's murder trial (laughs) and be like, Ozzy, what do you think about this? Yeah, Uh, no kidding. (laughs) Did you tell him to do it? (laughs) Yeah, fuck. Fuck, it's crazy. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Yeah, the only information, I'm sure there's more information about this. All the article sure. really said was that when asked about the connection between his music and a number of crimes that had been mentioned, like before, um, it said he was more or less cut off before he could give a, susp- a substantial defense. So, like, they they had him satellite in and then they didn't let him talk, basically. Oh, my um, lord. I wonder if that's what he was also featured on Geraldo or whatever. Hmm. Probably. But obviously, obviously, he's known for doing some crazy shit yeah. <laughs> in his band's time. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So the fear that heavy medic, heavy medical, oh my God, heavy <laughs> medical <laughs> contained lyrics, which, yes. Um, yeah. So they were afraid that heavy metal contained lyrics, which encouraged young people to do bad things. <gasps> was never more prevalent than in 1985 when 20-year-old James Vance tried to sue Judas Priest. Uh, After a night of partying, Vance and his friend, 18-year-old Raymond Belknap, probably just Belknap, uh, Mm. headed for a local playground and shot themselves. Uh, Belknap survived wouldn't survive the incident but vance would and went on to file a lawsuit against judas priest as he claimed the subliminal messaging within their stained glass album drove him to the act wow Um, that's a wild one right yeah ultimately the band and their record label would avoid any legal responsibility for the tragedy but this did not stop any of the public fears eesh yeah well, they fingered st- them he said it was your fault yeah and... basically yeah that one's i mean okay i would be interested to know if he had any specific things he pointed to like that's such a yeah specific claim i don't know um Crazy. one thing i did run across i i probably should have known this i feel like i <laughs> i i had some assumptions going in because i don't listen to heavy metal music but oh yeah 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 uh it said not all heavy metal bands wrote songs about satan uh or those kind of themes uh one of the websites talked about a metal band called striper um which promotes the opposite i think they're like like christian heavy metal i don't really know oh it could be nicer (laughs) nicer heavy metal i don't know Um, I mean, it's not like the rap lyrics are very nice against like yeah. a lot of different types of people, women yeah. included. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm, uh, that's funny. I do know that they've done studies and everything. I didn't really look it up, but they've done studies mm. that say that people that listen to like screamo and heavy metal music are some <laughs> of the like most in touch with their feelings and like can <laughs> regulate their emotions better than other people because they like release a lot of their anger in the, through like singing along and well, everything so to that point i've heard like pat be like i'll put on metallica in the car and like you know i feel less road rage and i'm like huh that yeah. does seem to work because i'm like yeah 
I don't know. It allows on it. it yeah. seems to allow people to vent their emotions. So even though mm. I don't enjoy it, it seems to be beneficial to people. So I'm happy they they like to enjoy it. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I don't know if yeah, I like the only one I really listened to was Metallica. So I don't know if, you, if yeah. that one's considered heavy metal. But no, I don't even think it showed up on my list. <laughs> no, they're more they're more rock slash obviously the metals in the name, yeah. but. <laughs> To, Lars yeah. Lars Ulrich stole that name from a friend of his anyway, who had a metal magazine. <laughs> oh, okay, he said so on Smartless. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> and then uh, it wasn't just heavy metal bands that were being okay. like pointed the finger at and saying you you guys are <laughs> causing bad immoral behavior. Yeah. Um. There was also like pop music was becoming more risque. He said mm. with artists like Madonna, Cindy Lauper, and Prince. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my god, I saw... Stuff even talked about Michael Jackson. I was like, oh, god damn it, oh. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Did you see... We saw the um, Weird Al movie. Pat, like, mm. got it on the Xbox or something. I haven't seen it yet. I want to watch it. There's a so Madonna <laughs> storyline. I had heard that there was. Oh, people were isn't like, Madonna really trying Madonna? to kill him? <laughs> or something they like date and then I, yeah a bunch of stuff yeah, happens i love it it's so <laughs> it's funny. ridiculous i it's haven't so seen it yet but uh it was yeah. such like such a like parody like over the top like of his like younger years wait. and stuff his dad's so mean that rain was like what is happening and like don't worry like this is not <laughs> like he's just like this his parents were very nice to him like <laughs> He did not have to overcome all these crazy obstacles, like adversity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. other than finding hair product that works for him. Curly. <laughs> yeah, it's curly hair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I I know I've heard a lot about like Madonna and everything. She's faced a lot of like shit over the years and everything about. Mm like lyrics music videos all that kind of stuff so oh yeah um, doesn't shock me that um, people were talking <laughs> about it in this they're like it's demoralizing and um, the like a virgin kind of video alone <laughs> has a lot of catholic isn't that yeah like yeah like, overtones <laughs> like a surgeon <laughs> yeah <laughs> for the very first time oh rain was like that girl is gorgeous i'm like that's evan rachel wood playing madonna she does look gorgeous uh, I like Evan Rachel. She's good. I love the 80s Madonna look. Oh, such an iconic yeah. like costume. <laughs> yeah. Um next a huge thing that happened, uh 1985, there was a committee known as the Parents Music Resource Center and they oh. made a, a list of songs. All the articles talked about this. It was kind of funny. Um they made a list of songs that they deemed inappropriate. And the list was called the Filthy Fifteen. Uh, oh my god! And if you look up the Filthy Fifteen today, <laughs> it's so funny. I tried to find a playlist on YouTube just to sit and listen to while I was doing these notes, and I couldn't find one that didn't oh. that had all fifteen. And then I ended up not listening to a bunch of these songs as a result because I was too lazy to look Damn. them up individually. But. Um, we'll be following up on that that sounds amazing yes and... i do have a picture of it so <laughs> you can look at it on the drive and you can look these up but it's like the naughty list of songs and yeah was... it's it's kind of <laughs> there's fun. one that comes to mind by like a comedy group that it's almost like the george carlin thing he does about the seven words you can't say on radio because it's like oh I bet yeah you they won't play this song on the radio i bet you they won't play this bleep 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 song it's all these like bleep noises and different horns and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice i like that yeah uh, yeah so they released this list as a template um and they were trying to propose legislation that would regard how albums would be rated in the future um they oh. argued that they should have extra warnings on them for like sex violence drugs alcohol or the occult and okay. <laughs> um they all said of the 15 nine of them were like metal songs slash bands um oh, okay. so there's like judas priest motley crew prince uh sheena oh. easton uh what? there was wasp Sheena, some of these are just because they were about sex or masturbation 
Um, so, uh, yeah, Ooh, Wasp is on here. Merciful Fate, Vanity, Def Leppard, Twisted Def Sister. Def Leppard? Yeah. I think of them as so tame. <laughs> uh, their song was High and Dry. I think that's why. Oh, my um, gosh. Well, at least it's not pour some sugar on me. Like, come on. What's the... Ooh, yeah. innuendo. <laughs> yeah. Um, Twisted Sister. We're not going to take it. Oh. What? Oh, my... I know, right? That one was literally just because it's about, like, standing up for yourself. Oh, You're my gonna God. Take it. Yeah. Anti-establishment. <laughs> yeah, they're like, put that on the list. Uh, Madonna, like Dress You Up. Uh, Cindy oh. Lauper. Uh, ACDC. This one makes sense. Cool. Let me put my love into you. <laughs> Uh, like <laughs> then the Black chili peppers have some raunchy lyrics when it comes yeah. to that oh my god <laughs> uh black sabbath there was Ma mary jane girls and venom blood sugar sex magic should be on there yeah <laughs> just from the t album name itself. yeah that whole <laughs> album that i've never yeah. listened to <laughs> uh, um, it's good it's got give it away on it under the bridge is from that one okay so it's got some good ones <laughs> that made it I to the radio <laughs> i don't really like the red hot chili peppers i know it breaks your heart but that's fine <laughs> they're like um, um stage show was eh. there was oh, no okay. socks on penises i was disappointed <laughs> no no tube socks no. yeah so that's the <laughs> list uh there'll be a picture of it on the drive for like the specific songs um, so the next one I kind of found of a band that was criticized was ACDC um, again <laughs> yeah they were oh. um, in the public eye after the capture of the Night Stalker Richard Ramirez um, who was oh. actually a big fan of the band they said he left like an ACDC hat at one of the scenes or something oh really um, yeah That's and odd um so once that was made public the public was like accused acdc of possibly influencing him with their song night prowler well maybe oh, for just, god's sake yeah. um then why didn't everybody else that ever listened to it become a horrible yeah. raping murder um <laughs> i i have listened to acdc my dad really likes them um so i know oh, some God. of their songs this one i didn't know Classic but rock um the song is just about a guy who sneaks into his girlfriend's room late at night it's not like oh yeah. anything too bad so there's whatever. way more problematic songs out there <laughs> Yeah, he, he's sneaking into his girlfriend's room at night, like, <laughs> to sleep with her. And the, what, the yeah, parents don't know? Yeah, that's pretty consensual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Whoa. Not a stranger's room, whatever. Um, Lord. Yeah. Um, headlines at the time even accused ACDC for standing for Antichrist Devil's Child. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not alternating current to whatever the fuck, direct current. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, Is that what it's God. supposed to stand for? I don't know. Well, if it's referring to like ACDC, like as in the electrical term, like, yeah. like the power. Not Antichrist Devil's Child? Uh... <laughs> he, that one guy does dress like a weird schoolboy child. Angus Young, he's always wearing those school, shorts. Schoolboy child. Schoolboy child. <laughs> With a little suit and tie. Schoolboy child. <laughs> Clearly. Um, oh, the devil dresses him. <laughs> <laughs> Make those shorts shorter uh, and the knee socks higher. Uh, <laughs> wrinkly old knees. <laughs> yeah. That's not the knee porn I'm here for. I want kilts. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so another one I ran into that had a thing about the name was uh kiss actually the band kiss uh, who then had to defend their name when people claimed it stood for knights in satan's service <laughs> i don't okay. know what kiss is supposed to stand for but i don't think it's that right i don't think it's anything <laughs> yeah right some of these i don't think stand for anything or sometimes it's literally just people's initials and then they like 
Yeah. REM. Yeah. They don't, people are always like, like rapid eye movement. They're like, no. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> no Mario comment. Speedwagon. The yeah. one who's next to when you're flipping for CDs. <laughs> what the fuck is that name about? That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Oh, Jericho uh, was talking about weird band names on his podcast the other day. And his comes from, oh, yeah. his band's name is Fozzy. Originally, they were um, an Ozzy Osbourne cover band. They were Fozzy Osbourne. And then they just oh. dropped the, the Osbourne when they got That's bigger. That's cute. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I but been, now like, people Fon ask me if it's from Fozzy Bear. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, the Fonz. No, like, um, Fozzy Waka Waka. <laughs> um yeah i thought this was kind of interesting there was like two sides to this about being kind of shit on in public about like oh you guys are influencing people to commit murder so some of the bands right. um like twisted sister ended up appearing in court against the this committee that was trying to say like that filthy 15 committee um, oh, okay. And they yeah, were trying to stand cool. against the government and argue their freedom of speech and try and reject these claims of trying to influence people to murder each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> so while they were trying to do that in court, other bands basically did the opposite. Um, there was lead singer of Merciful Fate. He said he was proud. He was a proud card carrying member of the Church of Satan. Oh, um, thanks, the buddy. band. Yeah. The band had <laughs> lyrics influenced by horror films and the occult, and they're a band along with Venom, okay. another one from the list, publicly oh. oh, publicly welcomed the publicity. I was like, what does this say? And <laughs> joked that the committee had actually failed to pick even their worst songs and had ended up actually helping increase their album sales um, because it got them a lot of publicity because merciful fate and Venom were like more indie like underground bands so when they got called out it actually made them more popular and made more yeah people aware this is of the first music. time i've ever heard of them sorry yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah same um <sighs> that's not helping matters <laughs> yeah. uh <sighs> in the end though the committee was actually successful and up parental advisory label was added to many albums and continues to be right. used today that's like yeah. parental advisory explicit content that one that's what this group did it was actually so... what the spearheader was like some senator's wife it was a bunch of senators wives it always is um <laughs> yeah it's like i guess whatever that's fine yeah. you can't ban everything though like geez yeah it's fine that they have like ratings on movies now and stuff it's yeah. just helps you know you know yeah if you're like little tiny kid should watch it yeah listen, um interesting <laughs> thing though is that many people now say that the advisory sticker often increases album sales to those of like mm. the same artist that doesn't have so if they release like one <laughs> album that has the sticker it tends yeah. to be better than like if the next album doesn't uh, yeah <clears throat> probably yeah. not for like sarah mclaughlin people probably don't care but like probably for the other ones they're like but like Ooh, rappers edgy. and everything i'm sure almost probably almost all rap albums yeah. now have it a lot of hip-hop ones will um yeah and there was one yeah. it was a blink 182 album and it wasn't even one of my parents it was my dad's girlfriend at the time who was like she shouldn't be allowed to listen to that it's blink 182 they swear a lot blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. One of the articles I read had the girl, she's like, yeah, the stupid parental advisory stopped me from by being able to buy that Blink-182 album when it came yes. out. It's just like, oh, oh they're early ones. Yeah, I Probably, can't remember yeah, which all one the small said. things. It's on it, yeah. I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, it's like, I had already been given it for Christmas or whatever. And then she was trying oh, to make it. So I like couldn't like listen to it. Oh, I that's forget awesome. why she thought she could have a say, but <laughs> uh -huh. he's not with uh, that girlfriend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> call out. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Screw you, Millie. <laughs> oh, snap. We Ooh. got the name out of her. Uh... <laughs> and <sighs> the... uh, a lot of this is like, or this is, I guess, the last thing about the 1980s, uh, is that horror films actually saw a huge increase in popularity. Oh. Pat could probably mm. start an entire podcast about horror movies in the 80s. 
Hell yeah. Oh my god, I love um, more movie podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Uh some of them even themselves jumped on the satanic panic bandwagon and featured storylines involving people being influenced to kill by playing albums or songs backwards. So even the oh, horror no. movies of the time jumped on the bandwagon. Um even yeah. though, like, has anyone ever been able to find anything that's ever been hidden in a song, actually? <laughs> um, I don't know. There, just... I've seen albums they've done recently. I think one of them was, like, Jack White. Uh, he did one recently where it's a hologram, actually, when you play the album, it, like, appears above the hol- <laughs> above the album. It's, like, insane. What? Um, you can, you can Google it. It's, it's, like, a little, like, couple centimeters tall and it like appears above the fucking needle it's crazy i i um, don't understand play it on a... yeah yeah that my my brain is i broken. barely understand how <laughs> records work themselves i don't understand how they can have in one groove with one needle have like the music and the lyrics and have all of it be clear yeah. it's it's sorcery to me i <laughs> And that's why I collect them, because it just, I sit there and I just go, whoa, like the whole time. I'm like, I don't know how this was possible. And they say it's like, one of the best ways to hear it, right? And then we went to yeah. weird little tapes, and then we went to weird little CDs, which just look like tiny little records, but would skip all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, now we're going back to albums, or you just stream it, like vinyl, right. or you just stream it, right? Um, oh, and the yeah. backwards stuff is well it's funny too because i was listening to a podcast the other day where they played some stuff backwards and had the other people guess it and some of it was from it was like seen from like ghostbusters and one of it was like <laughs> a wrestling match and you could tell it was wrestling but the other stuff it was just it's so warped and stuff and yeah. then the one guy was like that sounds like dan Aykroyd," and i was like what the fuck <laughs> how does he know that but yeah, then, that's really weird. Yeah, yeah, it is weird. I we should do it sometime if I can figure out how. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't have too much left. Um, just kind of like more things that's happened since uh, mm. Satanic Panic. M- most of it died down in like the nineteen nineties. Um, but music continues to be blamed, and artists still find themselves mm-hmm. involved with many controversies. Uh, um one of the biggest was actually with like columbine the shooting um that happened marilyn uh, manson was blamed for that because the two boys were like huge huge marilyn manson fans Um, they tried to blame the movies for those ones too (laughs) right yeah probably yeah because we had talked about it um with the natural born killers and yeah all of those ones all getting blamed for yeah different crimes it's like oh my god um (laughs) last thing i wanted to mention is that even today there's still like a lot of controversy for artists who use sort of like occult imagery with specifically Mm. people of color and like queer artists facing more intense scrutiny or backlash than maybe some other artists do um Mm. some of the ones that have happened recently even just the last few years was like doja cat um she was accused of promoting satanism with her album scarlet um she had like multiple songs about like calling herself the devil because she's like dressed in red and she had all these music videos about it um and (laughs) stuff and then other artists such as sam smith and lil nas x uh have faced backlash over (gasps) certain songs and like performances that they've done within like what probably the last two or three years um i think lil nas has even lost like that nike deal because they were red and people were trying to say they were devil's shoes or some shit oh <laughs> like, my god wow yeah <laughs> and then sam smith That's had so that dumb. grammy performance or something that people really didn't like yeah no i haven't sorry uh, i hadn't heard of that yeah that's crazy um and then a lot ends up going against like hip-hop artists like tyler the creator uh big l and kendrick lamar um who have also faced a lot of criticism over their songs a couple of them had done songs what was it it was like they basically have like even just a one-off line saying like they're the devil's son or something is enough for people to be like (laughs) stirred into a frenzy over it and like calling them out and all this oh my god metallica's new or yeah 
newest album or la- one of the last albums has one that's called if darkness had a son and it's like if darkness had a son here i am like that's literally the yeah. lyric <laughs> yeah so, so funny they're just like you think it would have gotten better like people would be like fuck if you don't want to listen to it don't listen oh to it my God. but it it's just as prevalent Seriously. like really and in regards to music i feel like it it is for sure um yeah maybe there's still some old generations that need to die off before we have right? some haters gone <laughs> maybe oh uh, <sighs> yeah that's that's what i got it was i'm sure there's little like off branches that could have kept going and going right. but yeah <laughs> one of those was, topics yeah Love yeah that. it's very so cool interesting yeah, yeah. Uh, like i probably wouldn't have thought to do music but i really enjoyed it i like music and... really yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know if i would have thought of that as a specific angle either because yeah it was good like, you have to primers. have to tell yeah. pat for thanks for the recommendation and the episode yeah. topic because it's really cool yeah yeah i liked researching it and that's that reminds me of like yeah, i was saying how the japanese true crime was one of those ones where it was like oh yeah it was something maybe we wouldn't have necessarily picked to research or i i picked something yeah. i wouldn't necessarily have thought to do which was what gangsters <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that can be like really fun to research something you don't know much about yeah, yeah. damn well we'll be back for part two <laughs> yeah are you looking for your next true crime podcast do you crave stories that have mystery and suspense well look no further Introducing Love and Murder, the podcast that dives deep into the world of relationships gone horribly wrong. Every week, I take you on a journey through the dark side of love, where passion turns into obsession, families become enemies, and romance turns to murder. From mysterious mysteries to suspenseful suspense, I dive deep into cases of love gone wrong. So why should you listen to Love and Murder? Because this is not just another true crime podcast where your partner's in crime. Not guilty. Your storytellers and your weekly dose of suspenseful entertainment. How many times have I said suspenseful? So what are you waiting for? Join the Love and Murder family and become part of the Lamb community. Tune in every week for a new episode that will keep you hooked. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button now. Love and Murder because you're either someone's last love or their first murder. Love and Murder, available on all major podcast platforms. Not for true crimers under 18. Must be an apple juice drinking enthusiast, but not really. Side effects include enjoying another true crime podcast, becoming a lamb, learning logic and how to deal with your problems in a healthy manner, and not turning to murder. Waiting for the next episode of Love and Murder to drop every week. Visit our website at www.murderandlove.com. And remember, all love and no murder. See you soon. Blast off. <laughs> part two, part two. Um, yeah. We can get right to her. Yeah. Part one was part one was fun. Fun and done. Is he being good? I can just see Gordon move. Yeah, he's just I, I think if I pet him, he'll probably be okay. He's okay. Like, you were at work and then you didn't even come home. <laughs> I went to the parents right after and then I left there and came home and fed (laughs) him and then yeah I only oh sorry (laughs) no that was it oh yeah no even if I just I only went out to get like gas and a couple things and the dog still gave me kind of the business when I got home with the big howl like where were you (laughs) jeez no he's funny (laughs) Gordo's fine. He just naps during the day when I'm not home. <laughs> That's cute. I like the kitties. All right. Well, part one is done and we're back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're ready for my case. No, it's mostly I more don't history. know. <laughs> I I'm excited. I'm ready to learn. Yeah, yours had some good learning. And then, but yeah, we didn't have much 
overlap except for that one spot where I said I'm going to elaborate on that one I have some more yeah <laughs> I I'm happy it worked out that way when I was doing my notes I I thought a few yeah. things maybe you would end up talking about so I came across the Ozzy Osbourne on on interview by Geraldo Rivera or whatever I do remember and yeah then, well I think I was gonna put in a quote and then I thought oh she'll probably talk about it so then I just I was like I have yeah. enough <laughs> mm-hmm. oh it was the gift that kept on giving <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it's really interesting a lot of stuff I didn't know you just hear it mentioned and I didn't know how close to home some of the origins would be like uh, that one major catalyst would come out of Canada and that would be, that would be the, the, it, well right. it's the book that you mentioned so we'll get oh, to it oh that was Canadian okay I didn't it know that. was <laughs> go us <laughs> yeah fuck <laughs> it's like when people say explain something from like sometimes and I listen to like Australians or whatever and they're like oh that word means like this for our American listeners I'm like hey we don't get it either <laughs> don't yeah. forget about the northern <laughs> northern North Americans <laughs> yeah but everyone does it's fine it's fine <laughs> we're not mad about it <laughs> I was gonna say she's not bitter no <laughs> No, but Pat's always like, you hardly ever see Canadian flags when they show like different like military representations from different countries and in, in like a war room mm-hmm. in like the movies or whatever. Oh yeah. And so he'll he's always very happy when he does see um Canada represented <laughs> that way. Oh okay. Yeah. I guess I never noticed. I never thought to look. <laughs> we have a pretty good military, but like, yeah, not everybody knows that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just remember people used to joke that there was more submarines at West Edmonton Mall that there were than the Canadian military had because they used oh. to do those little submarine underwater tours <laughs> uh at the mall yeah, like, yeah yeah yes the mall had like four submarines and the the military oh, yeah. had like two and it was like mm-hmm. right okay. like mini submersible size yeah submarines. it's like four people yeah. <laughs> I think people do like to joke about the Canadian army but We'll have to see what yeah. my sister in the Navy has to say about that one. She, <laughs> she's been on a lot of big ships and probably a submarine too, but I couldn't do that. Oh yeah. man. Imagine living in a sub. I don't know why we'd have need for a lot of them up here, but you never know. I, I, I'm i not claustrophobic, but the thing about yeah. being underwater gets me. Uh, yeah. A lot of things can go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, and like I'm I'm a decent enough swimmer, like I I I don't know what my thing about it is. Maybe just the water like coming in or like the pressure. Yeah. Um Yeah, that, I don't know. That movie uh with Kristen Stewart where she's working at the thing at the bottom of the ocean. Really oh, terrifying. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called. It's just like one. I think word, it was like, just called underwater. Something. I think oh, okay. it was literally just called Underwater. <laughs> I remember I watched it simple, yeah. Not too long ago. Yeah, it was pretty oh, good. Okay. That messed me up too. I'd watch that again. Ooh. All right. So, but other on to other fears. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, it's, obviously people have a lot of things to say about music and different bands and different games like D&D and things yeah. like that. I thought but, you might talk about D and D. I know that was a big thing. Yeah, I don't have much, honestly. I could like. I think I might probably mention to you off air that I can think of a, probably a few cases that tr- true crime cases where people were like maybe just sus- under suspicion more because they were like fans of D and D or fans of metal music. Combination oh, of these okay. things. Well, um, yeah, but yeah, there's there's a lot of that for sure (laughs) um but there's a lot of this other stuff too which comes out of a bunch of other places which is like daycares and preschools so that was a big Mm -hmm. big part of it (laughs) yeah Um, so i so i've come to learn right it's really scary when we 
get into it because it's just like it'll start with like one little kernel of suspicion like from one yeah. child um and then snowball such as in this one the mcmartin preschool uh case which was out of a place called manhattan beach which was in california confusingly oh okay. All <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah appropriately named i guess for not being in new york i'm glad i didn't just assume it was yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway yeah that one was shocking and devastating um it started out with just one small child who was complaining to their parents they i guess they were a little constipated or something and they were having some painful bowel movements which i mean if you're a parent you probably i've experienced that with my child if they're not yeah. drinking enough water and stuff when they're little so but yeah. i don't know so uh this four-year-old says um some statements that make his parents suspicious that he's being abused okay it's, it's confusing why those two things are connected but um basically he apparently names one of the like leaders of the daycare in hurting him and being part of whatever like <laughs> bad stuff against him and then um another child said that one worker flew through the air <laughs> like oh um some of it's pretty wild so it's pretty crazy how levitating her head spinned all the way around like the exorcist yeah and then other crazy stuff but then they like it's taken seriously Ugh. yeah i mean if it was your kid and they started saying Something. stuff you'd want to believe them right i feel like you would never yeah. think your your kid would lie you wouldn't want to think your kid would lie right I wouldn't want to think Gordo would lie to me. <laughs> yeah, I had something to say. Yeah, um, yeah, but also like three and four year olds, they hardly know what they're saying. They say <laughs> some wild shit sometimes. Yeah. I I can't wait for Rudy. She she says oh, some yeah. crazy stuff right now. She's starting to talk <laughs> more. I can't wait until it's just nonsensical sentences. And, <laughs> You see yeah. parents sometimes when you're out and the kid says something, the parent just goes, mm hmm, yep. And it's like, did you <laughs> understand what that was? Like, yeah, I have yeah. No yeah. idea what that kid just said to you. <laughs> but they're, yeah, with their little lisps and their baby talk and the way they. Yeah. And, and then, and then, and then. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Rudy yeah. will have some past life regression statements you never know maybe say some spooky things <laughs> oh i hope not oh it'd be so creepy it would creep me out yeah i don't remember listening specifically for anything like that but then she would just say like stuff that like potatoes were spicy and things that just didn't really make sense <laughs> so i would just try to jot them down or try to remember it so i could tease her later you know now we that she's older <laughs> Yeah, we tell Rooney that uh, pop is spicy water. Oh, like we're spicy I... juice. This juice is spicy because it's carbonated. <laughs> well, Rain's never liked pop. Maybe it is a little too spicy, uh... for her. a little too effervescent. <laughs> too buble, too buble for her. <laughs> <laughs> too buble to play. Yeah. Um. <sighs> There was a source that mentioned uh, Sigmund Freud, that guy, who oh. apparently said something like, believe the children, like, as in, like, oh. always believe the children. Believe all women, you know, that kind of... <laughs> yeah, it's... I think there's some stuff that we can say <laughs> he he was wrong about. Yeah, yeah. And then there's always stuff that's like misattributed from people as what they believed and things like that which is yeah a whole nother kettle of fish but interesting and nonetheless um what I... <laughs> I forgot what i wrote here and it was uh you ever see that movie there's a movie called invention of lying with ricky gervais yeah i did oh, watch okay. that yeah and 
it was it wasn't that it was super bad but me and pat took to calling it the invention of montage because they leaned heavily on <laughs> like montages from what i remember i don't, don't remember much about that movie i think i watched it <laughs> near to when it first came out yeah. and then never again oh yeah and that would have been probably some years back now yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's ricky gervais and he's like a man that, and he's the only one that knows how to lie in this world for some reason yeah which is something like that it's crazy yeah because then he's like oh i can make anyone believe anything because no one knows that anyone could be untruthful and it's just like i don't know i thought i guess i thought it was a similar slippery slope <laughs> yeah if no one could lie how could we who could we tell who's lying uh yeah you can't believe anybody at all costs just without looking at the evidence in each case is but they didn't know as much as we do now i guess and yeah the pre unfortunately the previous the, the preschool had no previous training or anything to deal with this and simply were likely just not equipped to deal with any abuse allegations made to them yeah. uh, so what they did was make like a mass uh letter what year did I say this was? Email? I don't know. Like, <laughs> they, oh no, eighties, right? Letter <laughs> to the parents, and it was like, if you guys know of any abuse, like, ask your kids if they've had any abuse what? at the school because we've had a report, and we want to know if your kids know anything. So okay, that's a little <laughs> weird. That's kind of what they did to get the parents to like kind of interview their own kids, which was not great in the end um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least uh quite naturally one might assume now but like that people started seeing signs of possible stress and trauma in their children uh signs like bedwetting picky eating and bad behavior um you know <laughs> those are pretty standard three and four year old behavior right it's just like they're kind of it's like when you hear of a symptoms of a condition or something that you're reading about or hearing about yeah. you immediately think like well i could i could have that or like <laughs> suddenly yeah. <laughs> yeah like a confirmation bias or something i don't know if that's the right word but yeah you're looking for it so you see it <laughs> mm -hmm. um other schools had similar problems uh, there was the Keller's Day Care run by Fran and Dan Keller in Austin, Texas, um, that had some really wild accusations made by some of the uh, children. Um, they, met, they mentioned it briefly on the You're Wrong About podcast episode I listened to, but then I, when I came across it again um, in, an, in another source, it was like, just cutting up babies and throwing them into pools and making the kids <gasps> swim in them. <laughs> like, these... Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> but very also dramatic. They, yeah. And then also they, they went to a local, like um, it said like park, but like zoo, I guess animal park. Cause they stole a baby gorilla and kidnapped that for a ritual and just cut off its finger and took its blood for some reason. <laughs> okay. That's what kid is making up those lies? Those are crazy dork. lies. <laughs> yeah, that's real, real dork. Um, but you know, yeah, as several sources pointed out, it's not like they went looking for any missing gorillas <laughs> to yeah. try and verify that. Or like babies that were cut up into the oh, pools, or whatever they said. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of like, oh, like I should just put like a blanket trigger warning maybe at the beginning of my thing. <laughs> maybe I'll insert one later. <laughs> you should know what's coming, but there's a lot of like animal and alleged child abuse claims. And... Yeah, I think that's kind of given. It's very yeah. satanic. <laughs> right. We don't. Yeah, usually get mad at them for baking cookies or whatever it is people think that Satanists and yeah. Satan worships, worshipers do. Um, 
Oh, yeah. So this one I had a, there was a further quote about the Keller case in Austin. The fuse was lit in August 1991. So this is, you know, a little bit later on, but still happening. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was alive for this. <laughs> um, I wasn't. <laughs> So when a three-year-old girl on the way to a behavioral therapy session told her mother that Dan Keller, um, which was the daycare guy, uh, had spanked her at the preschool, or the preschool guy, sorry, (laughs) at the preschool he ran with his wife in Austin. The girl told the therapist that Keller had sexually assaulted her, uh, another trigger warning, using a pen and pooped and peed on my head. (laughs) I'm so sorry. It just goes from one extreme to like yeah. the most infantile sounding thing, you know. It's just like, oh my god, damn! Not that people aren't aren't into piss play, whatever you call it, golden showers. <laughs> not gonna, not here to yuck your yum, but uh, yeah, pedophilia, not cool. Yeah. Um, uh, in subsequent months, two other children made similar claims about the Kellers. By the time the couple went on trial in November 1992, the allegations were significantly more lurid and involved allegations of ritual abuse, murder, dismemberment, and animal sacrifice. Yeah, that seems crazy. Right? You're like, oh god, did the kids talk together? And then, you know, it starts catching, being almost contagious. Like, one person says something, so then the other kids feel like, well... Maybe maybe I misremembered, or maybe I should say yeah. something. And, oh. um, so this is crazy. They were sentenced to 48 years in prison in 1991. Oh even God. though the girl recanted her story as untrue in court. The first little girl, I guess. Okay, she did it that soon. That's good. Apparently. It wasn't like decades later being like, I lied. Yeah. Damn. And that's the thing too. Like these poor little kids are their own yeah. victims being like asked about these things and talked to about these things in completely an unhealthy, an awful way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Shit. that's really horrible. And so is the rest of this. Well, it has a happy ish ending. They served 21 years of that sentence. Released in 2013. Yep. Oh my um, god. They later said they felt like it was a modern day Texas witch hunt. Um, yeah. Like I can I can't imagine one day just like going about my business, whatever, and then somebody just accuses you of like witchcraft and sacrificing babies and stuff, and suddenly you're in prison for 20 years. Oh no like, hard evidence at all. Yeah. And the word yeah. of a literal child. Yeah. Uh, that's it's not good and like it took till 2013 to get those guys out yeah 2013 seems late to me like i feel like they could have done it in the early 2000s i mean but yeah they got sentenced in 91 that's crazy damn i know and like look how long people spend even after it becomes obvious that like they probably didn't do it takes a long time to get out right Um, it seemed as people learned about the possibilities of child sexual abuse, nefarious activities like trafficking, et cetera, things that we now take for granted. (laughs) No, it's so horrible. Um, but no one could believe really that it could happen at home, I think was the thing. So, um, yeah, they were, everything kind of points to people being like, you know, normal people couldn't possibly do this. It couldn't possibly be usually like a friend or family member. So certainly it's got to be someone like a Satan worshiper. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're like distancing themselves from somebody to scared. blame, right? Yeah. Like they're starting to hear about this. And was it early 90s and stuff when there's in like 90s when we start to get the 24 hour news cycle where you're like, because you have the internet and stuff, you can be hearing about horrible headlines and clickbait and stuff like 24 hours. Yeah. And true crime Probably. cases start getting all this like coverage and trial by media. It's a whole mess. 
Mm-hmm. Gordo, okay. <laughs> I've had enough of your shenanigans. Ugh. Shenanigans. Shenanig don't. <laughs> You're a catastrophe. Okay, just leave it. He's trying to shove his legs into the Kleenex box behind the computer. <laughs> okay. That's not a box you can fit into, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You can't fit or sit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Gordo. No, you can't fit in there, and people yeah. can't fit into a tiny bottle. But I was listening to a podcast thing where the people of London were like going to go to this show where a guy was going to apparently squeeze himself into a tiny bottle, like one of those little ships they build. <laughs> oh, no. And then nobody showed up and they were like, wow, people are gullible. <laughs> I love stories. Anyway, history be crazy. Um, ah, that is what we're talking about now. So crazy is history, even yeah. recent history. <laughs> um, so what's arguably sometimes worse, They, I mean, they both really suck, but is the real crime cases that tend to get mixed up with the rumors of rituals and the moral Mm. panics. Yeah. That then lead to like more wrongful convictions and create more victims while detracting from the first set of victims also. (laughs) It's a horrible cycle. Yeah. Cause they're focusing on the wrong people. Yeah. There's the, a big case that, uh, came up and was mentioned a lot when I was doing this was the one that called the West Memphis three. I don't know if you heard of it. I think I'd heard. Uh, I think it came up a little bit in mind. I briefly read it, but uh, because it didn't involve like music, I didn't want to do like read too much about it. No. And it's just like, I, I don't know if you would have heard of it. It's kind of, um, but you know, bigger case in the true crime yeah. world or whatever. Uh, is that the but, one they did on? Was it Netflix or Prime? It was called "This is How They See Us." Was that the same one? I think they do have a documentary. Don't know if that's what it was called. I don't yeah. have that written down, but mm-hmm. um, I like listen to a podcast about the case and I was like oh okay I think I've kind of heard of this but it's really very deserving of its own telling or episode or whatever but it's yeah I know it's like basically the one where there's three young boys that are found brutally murdered in West Memphis and then there's three like older like teenage slash on the cuffs but being young men boys like guys who get accused of doing the deed and then they like basically don't look at anyone else but all they have on these guys is their interest in like one wicca two dungeons and dragons and three metallica so i'm like lock me up (laughs) they cover all the bases religion board games and music Oh my god. Fucking Damn. evil tabletop role-playing games. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> They've got dice with many sides! <laughs> what would they think about exploding kittens and... Oh god. What would Some they of think of Cards Against Humanity? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's... The, the one... De- one depraved <laughs> daniel radcliffe's delicious asshole isn't that one of the cards <laughs> too funny oh my gosh he was great in the weird owl movie yeah. oh that yeah. was like... i already mentioned that didn't i sorry <laughs> yeah in part one <laughs> yesterday okay i don't know what else we've watched lately it's other things that i can't think of now i'll go <laughs> I'm watching a good mini series on Netflix. Um, it's one of the ones adapted from uh, Harlan Coben. He's like a thriller writer. There's just a bunch of them on like Netflix. There's one with Dexter, okay. and anyway, they're all yeah. good. <laughs> um, yeah, but we can't talk about the Satanic Panic without mentioning uh, 
or I should say mentioning again, the book, Michelle Remembers. Can't forget about Michelle Remembers. Um, yeah. Remember, <laughs> to <book>. <laughs> Remember to forget. Remember to forget. This book is straight out of British Columbia, Canada. What Boo. Word? Boo that it came from Canada. Yes. I was like, what? Mm. This is our neighbor to the West. Um, yeah. From like uh, Victoria, BC. It's this sleepy little beautiful town. <laughs> and as you mentioned, it was a doctor, Dr. Larry Pazder and his patient turned lover. Patient come lover. No. <laughs> Michelle Smith. <laughs> Uh, it came out right in 1980, um, and Dr. Larry was a psychiatrist practicing in Victoria, B.C., who met Michelle when she went to him uh, following the stress and, like, depression after a miscarriage, unfortunately. So, okay, that's how they met. Um, but as they go over in this new documentary by B.C. boys, Sean Harler and Steve Adams, Satan Wants You... <laughs> <laughs> they uh, found out it went a little sideways after that, shall we say. Um, they were, she was married at the time um, that she started seeing him. And then the sessions were a little weird. Like one thing I read said she just like primal screamed for like 20 minutes in one session one time. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to be in the office next to them? Like, no. I, I hope there's a soundproof room. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like yeah. that's only something you can do in the outdoors and not look like a maniac. Like, do it in a forest or on well, a canyon or something. Yeah, yeah. It literally just made me flash back to we were rewatching Nope and that tech guy gets out there to help them set up the cameras and stuff. And all of a sudden he's just oh like being God, weird. Yes. Then he just like screams and they're like, dude, like the horses. And he's like, Oh, sorry. I'm just like real stressed. Cause like my girlfriend broke up with me. I don't know what he says. He's such a, yeah. <laughs> he's the ancient aliens loving dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I was like, they always make ancient alien people like <laughs> the biggest losers. I'm like, thanks guys. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, but it was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yes, she's being treated for depression. And then he somehow goes to helping her recall her repressed memories. Um, natural progression, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and I'm not quite sure. Like, it, it's very vague about his method, but. Maybe he just sends her into some sort of a trance or hypnosis or whatever, but probably, yeah, hopefully that's all it is. Um, <laughs> but that's when the memories of her mother's alleged abuse begin. And you know what her mother's name was? Virginia. Oh. Shocked and appalled. And I'm so glad I got a good Ginny for a mom. Um, so he's all there giving her all the recovered memory therapy. Wink. <laughs> and she is telling him all about how her mom gave her to a cult when she was five and this is the first time she's remembering it mind you okay um not that i'm skeptical or anything <laughs> <laughs> well we but, already said the book was debunked so. oh my god is it ever such a bull honky <laughs> baloney um, <laughs> yeah she details an alleged following 14 months of abuse, captivity, torture, ritual murders, and baby sacrifices. Um, they uh, also mentioned in this the article about uh, this documentary about it, Satan Wants You. And I, I didn't know where else to put it, but it's this instance where a daycare in Saskatchewan was accused of harboring a murderous cult. Um, so they mention it in this CBC article because it's Canadian. So they're like, hey, we had this happen too. <laughs> and it's called, yeah. It's called the Martinville Nightmare. It's all these M names in them. They're all like Martinville, McMartin School. Like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it like happened here. Nine people were charged with like no hard evidence. Um, wow. 
Yeah, quote, nine people facing nearly 180 charges with children saying they had been hoisted into cages, stuffed into freezers, and forced to drink blood and perform sexual acts. Uh, only two charges, neither of which were related to satanic ritual abuse, were upheld on appeal. So, just like, same Damn. bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it's just crazy when you get into it, like rabbit hole talk about the amount of cases i could have yeah had to choose i'm from. sure there's like dozens and dozens right and it's all like it's all these little kids but then it's all like being found as unfounded okay so back to the book the book sales skyrocket this salacious book and all the cultiness yeah. in it they start touring around doing like the tv circuit on all like the talk shows i guess um oh i hate them yeah yeah they essentially become the experts on the subject unofficially. Fuck you. It's this that. had yeah. Like this had very real repercussions on the police's training and things, which I have a little bit on. Just craziness. Um the uh the writer director of the Satan Wants You documentary, he grew up ten minutes down the road from where Larry and Michelle had their huge house overlooking the ocean. Um which if you don't know much about Victoria, that means they're fucking rich. <laughs> like those houses yeah. in that area are like in the millions sometimes. Probably made um, so much money off of that book. Yes, exactly. Like, uh... oh, still alive and kick it now, but he said like growing up there in that area, it had a huge effect and there's one scene from the book where Michelle is taken to the uh, the local cemetery. It's called the Ross Bay Cemetery. Um, yeah, cemetery, sorry. Where her mother and her fo followers, quote unquote, bury her alive before rebirthing her and giving her over to Satan in a ceremony. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So that poor cemetery was constantly vandalized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there was like an explicit rule never to go there on Halloween night, lest you be sacrificed or something yourself. Oh my God. I just hate that there's like people that are actually victims, like especially kids of like sexual yeah. abuse and stuff. And instead people are focusing on like these two that are lying and everything. You're right. Because true of... cases get lost. Yeah. Sorry. Or... Yeah. using uh, trying to use their experience from the book to like help the police force when you, they should be listening to right. the real victims and their experiences because that that's actually the best people to listen to exactly. are the victims and how to help in the future yeah like, yeah and uh, it's like seem to, seemingly this almost bandwagon that yeah. kids are like jumping on well, if they talk about it on the news enough, I'm sure if they're in the room, they're just talking about, if, mm -hmm. depending how many details they go to on the news, like, even the yeah. kids hearing about it on the news, could the next day just repeat the same story and be like, oh, blah, 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 exactly. this happened to me, and they're like, oh, not my kids too, and it's like, well, were yeah. you watching the news with your kid in the room the other day? And then the, like, and kids day. hear and understand so much more when you're talking than yeah you think yeah <laughs> they're smart little buggers <laughs> yeah um yeah they uh so they spoke to many locals during the filming of the documentary um including larry's first wife marilyn uh who i didn't find much more about but I don't think she was impressed with the uh, overall <laughs> situation i would be pissed off <laughs> yeah yeah, I think she was like, yeah, that's bullshit kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the book was being used to create checklists for law enforcement and mental health professionals to better fight Jeez. and investigate satanic ritual abuse crimes in their communities. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, uh, so according to this New York Times article that I couldn't access for free anymore when I was trying to <laughs> source oh. it and... <laughs> Re refer back to it i was like damn it i'm like i think it's this one <laughs> but it's Aww. not letting me read the whole thing 
uh, but I read it the first time. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but they said it was also called sometimes the ritual abuse scare or the daycare panic, but those aren't as catchy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't um, rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> Not like panic at the satanic disco. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, says Ken Lanning, a former FBI agent who worked on hundreds of abuse cases with the behavioral science unit. Quote, yes, you. <laughs> uh, the evidence wasn't there, but the allegations of satanic ritual abuse never really went away. When people get emotionally involved in an issue, common sense and reason go out the window. People believe mm -hmm. what they want and need to believe. Yeah, that's true. Even today. Yeah. Very smart for a, well, FBI guy, I guess you'd have to be. Yeah. Not like that dumb FBI guy. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, and as pointed out by people smarter than me, the book Michelle remembers praise on already existing fears and anxieties. Um, yes, and they pointed out in that article, which shall no longer be named. Um, and <laughs> as brought up when you uh, were talking, the the more that women were walk working outside the home and different traditions and roles were being switched and flipped. Yeah. People were using, like using childcare for the first time and then feeling yeah. guilty and probably wondering about how their kids are being cared for while they're away. Um, yeah. Women were good at feeling guilty. <laughs> but... Always. Yeah. <laughs> Catholics. Uh, you're Catholic and a woman. Oh God. No. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was all perfect conditions for this moral panic. Um, yeah, the one art, the, the one source quoted Sarah Marshall from the podcast You're Wrong About, which I thought was awesome. But I know she's probably a journalist of some regard also. It, it's a level above our <laughs> my research yeah. for the podcast, shall we say. Um, but what she said about it was, what readers heard was, don't look in the mirror. The call is not coming from inside the house. The Satanists are the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I like the way she said it. Um, but yeah, it's simply so far from being true. Obviously, we can never assume to know a case before it plays out. Um, experts now realize that in some cases, like the Manhattan Beach case, the action taken was the worst kind of action you could possibly have taken unfortunately like the mass letter to the parents to have them do the interviewing and yeah ask a bunch of toddlers to tell you what may or may not have happened in case the teachers they go to are evil bad people who might hurt someone else like how very confusing for the child and like in a kid's point of view <laughs> even a daycare worker asking you to stop doing something or telling you to stop doing something whatever mm. it could be that's mean and kids like mm. sometimes blow stuff out of proportion or rebel against hate. authority <laughs> oh, so they could be like yeah they were evil and all this stuff they were being so mean to me right? and pooped and peed on my head and then put a pen inside me like do they even know those things are like severely different degrees of like, do you know what I mean? Like, they don't even know yeah. what sex is at that age. Like, yeah, that's that that's oh concerning, way. at least for that kid. Like, oh my god, uh, yeah, you're like, how did you come up with that? But yeah, maybe something you heard an adult say. Like, who's to say? Um, so yeah, unfortunately, at the time, the FBI cops, lawyers, social workers were all sharing these books and different. Uh, materials as training text share training texts sharing all their findings at seminars and comparing all their notes Damn. um <laughs> they actually passed around leaflets about symbols like the uh it's called the cross of nero and and the horned hand what oh, that's hilarious the horned hand when I, when is I that the up, egyptian the one the, oh it's the devil horn like the rocker horns. the horned hand i was thinking it was that um that one yeah. that's like like that that yeah. one 
The one that oh, you get that. two flat palms on one of their. I don't know that one. Okay. Or, no, it it well, it has like the the two like thumbs. It's like a thumb on each side, and it's like curling out like that. That one. Oh, I don't know if I know that one, but I was just like, wait, that's. It's got like, like the evil eye on it and stuff too. Okay, because there's religious ones. Like the horned hand is yeah. not just something that like the rockers do. It's like you know people do it to ward off the devil. People do it to Claire and Outlander because they think she's a witch. Like it's yeah. just it's like super innocuous thing today. That's like so innocent. I don't know. But yeah. I also didn't like. I didn't know what the Nero cross was. Yeah, Boy. that is. Uh, well, I, 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 I guess I know a little bit more now, but you tell me, this is what I could find. <laughs> the one site said, occasionally maligned as an anti-Christian symbol, because it's an upside down, broken Nero cross, a satanic character, or even a Nazi emblem, the iconic peace sign is apparently not so innocent to everyone. So... I think it's a peace sign. <laughs> this is, this was a very tiny rabbit hole I fell down. <laughs> Bear with me. This thing said, uh, thankfully the symbol has a clear history and its origin is not so controversial. The modern peace sign was designed by Gerald Holton for the British campaign for nuclear disarmament in 1958. The vertical line in the center represents, so like, the the peace sign that you draw, not like the one you put up with your fingers. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, the vertical line in the center represents the flag semaphore signal for the letter D, and the downward lines on either side represent the semaphore signal for the letter N. N and D for nuclear disarmament enclosed in a circle. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So it was sure. like all whatever you say. We came up with this peace symbol. But it was just basically also, they refer to it sometimes as an upside down broken Nero cross. Um, huh. I was like, this is the nerdiest little rabbit hole. And I just, I don't know, were they just out looking for peace? Because like in the 60s, right? Was that peace symbol not used all the time? <laughs> 1958. Okay, so it's come up with like right yeah, before the 60s. Um, and another website basically said the Nero cross of Nero broken cross represents the hatred and persecution of Christians. Nero, the Roman emperor from 54 to 68, hated the Christian people and crucified Peter, the apostle, St. Peter. He didn't like Peter's is his. <laughs> so all that to say, they're looking for all kinds of symbols. And I saw videos where they were like showing like bodies on the ground that had like um pentagrams and weird symbols like that but like oh weird all sorts of stuff they're looking for that like, i'm like did they ever even find any um <laughs> sorry mouth is dry so some cops did kind of call bullshit on this kind of things when they were getting the seminars and stuff but other ones kind of ate it up i guess yeah yeah <laughs> and this is one's kind of uh interesting uh hopefully <laughs> in april of 1985 thousands of curious angry and confused customers were calling the corporate giant proctor and gamble about leaflets that accused them of using their profits from selling household goods to support devil worship oh i think i saw that too in my research <laughs> oh suddenly I mean, it's so weird. They're such like a household yeah. name. Yeah. Um, they said it's all rumors. Possibly they started years earlier with scrutiny of their logo. Um, oh, I should have tried to find a picture of it. Excuse me. Apparently it shows a bearded man in the moon facing 13 stars. Or it did anyway. But it was clearly a symbol of the devil and not a reference to the original 13 colonies. Um... <laughs> Yeah, not at all. No. <laughs> so then followed like a two decade campaign of them trying to clear their name, eventually ending with many court cases as recently as 2007. 
um, and them changing their logo that they'd had since 1882. Wow. <laughs> right? That's crazy. They had to change their whole fucking logo. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. Yeah. Um, then in, or I guess then, going back a bit, in May of 1985, TV show 2020 ran a segment on Satan. Uh, or I guess Satan. Just on Satan. <laughs> Satan, Satan, how he was doing. <laughs> this is my crib. <laughs> yeah, Come in, guys. I'll give you a tour. <laughs> this is MTV Cribs. Satan. <laughs> He's wearing a big Flava Flav clock thing. <laughs> this Flav is where he came Oh my God. Uh, it talk the show talked about animal mutilations, rock music, and devil worship. Oh, and satanic graffiti. Don't that up. <laughs> the graffiti? The graffiti? <laughs> the graffito? <laughs> So much money was spent by the end of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like 15 million on the McMartin preschool cases alone. Wow. I can't even imagine. Um, almost 200 people were charged over the course of the panic. Dozens convicted. Many later freed. Um, sometimes after many years. Like, yeah. Oh about. my God. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy how, like, bad it was. I guess I just didn't realize. Yeah. It was so horrible. I didn't, like, I would it was expecting dozens of cases. I didn't expect, yeah. like, over 200. Um, in 2011, the West Memphis Three uh, guys were released. And the Kellers, who we talked about from Texas, were that were released after 21 years, were awarded... Uh, three point four million from a state fund for wrongful convictions. Woohoo! <laughs> I'd be asking for a lot more. Oh my god, your lives ruined, your reputations ruined. Like, yeah. I'd be like, I want a million a year for each of us. <laughs> yeah. Like... Seriously, those kids gotta feel bad too if they. Yeah. Anyway. It's not their fault. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's not. Because yeah. they probably don't remember even saying it, some of them. Yeah, and it said that some, it's like that the kids apo like apologized afterwards, but. Yeah, like I don't but... remember anything I probably said before <laughs> the age of like seven or eight. Right? Like, yeah. All I remember is. Uh, probably when I was too old to have been saying weird things. I was lying in a <laughs> cradle when my mom was working at King's Landing at this uh, this a cabin at the far, far end of the site, so people don't come to it a lot because it's a long walk, and it's like the last okay. thing you see before you start coming back towards like the door and everything at the the entrance and yeah. stuff. And so <laughs> I was lying in this little my body in this little cradle with my legs hanging out, and I was like, I used to be silver, but now I'm green. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i think you told me that before <laughs> i think it's gone into family legend is probably just the weirdest things i could come up with but my brother used to say if a dog and a monkey got in a fight who would win so he said weird things too <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right uh, well we all know boys are weird <laughs> yeah. oh he loved last week's episode and he said watch out i'm gonna do it to you i'm gonna prank you <laughs> So, no, the dog would go insane. Yeah. And he's like, I'm sending you cheeses. And I was like, ooh, but cheeses, though. <laughs> I'll know if anybody sends me fake pizzas. Or not yes. Pizzas, fake pizza deliveries <laughs> that I didn't order. <laughs> right? You're pretty great. I would love a fake if somebody sent me a pizza as a prank, I'd be like, thanks for the pizza. Well, if they prepay it, I mean, yeah, I got no 100%. problem with this yep. <laughs> situation. <laughs> well, I'll put in my order right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the one girls I listened to, what, the drinking the Kool-Aid girls, 
um, sometimes uh, what uh, Cassidy's got the what is it an Amazon wish list you can have or whatever where people yeah. can see what you would like. And sometimes people just buy her stuff off there. And she's like, "Oh, thank you for oh. whoever did that." I was like, "That's really nice. <laughs> you have nice fans." <laughs> That'd be cool. Hint, hint. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know how you make that public, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, DM us. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, things to think about in the future. <laughs> yeah, or like I know some people have buy me a coffee, which is one where you can make one-off donations if people don't want to join your Patreon. So if you guys would be interested yeah. in that, we, we'll start one. But yeah, you never know. Crimes and consequences have one. It's like buy uh... me a beer. I'm so down with people buying me a beer. Um, (laughs) So, okay. To wrap it up here, a few more things. In 1992, the Lanning guy from the FBI put out an investigative guide on his skepticism of the claims, uh, all the allegations and whatnot. Mm, Good for him. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, he seemed like well, smart guy. More. <laughs> uh, two years after that, the National Center on Child Abuse and Neglect said that roughly that the roughly 12,000 accusations of group cult sexual abuse based on satanic ritual could not be substantiated. 12,000? Oh. So, so many. Yeah, um, yeah I guess oh over the whole God. like decade, everything. Um, yeah i guess what else some stories came afterward like i said some were the kids who were victimized themselves and in, the, in all this um they mentioned something that i could not even bring myself to look further into on the one podcast because it was something called like the winking test and it had to do with checking the children's sphincters to see if they had recently been sexually abused but like this is way before trauma and yeah. rape kids and stuff so it's such crackpot i didn't even like i couldn't even like google that i was like i heard about it on the one podcast and i was like this is crazy uh <laughs> wow that's like oh anyway yeah there's just so much sometimes abuse that goes on under the pretense of being you know, helpful or whatever yeah. to victims, but um, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not that's not up to you, daycare workers and cops and oh, yeah, even so. that. I think if I was a kid, would have been like scarring, like oh my, I'm just trying to do tests and interviewing you and everything about it. Even if There's... it didn't happen to you, would yeah, be, you're like, a young, young kid. Ah, you're so impressionable. Just like you're like accidentally putting them through those. Um, you hear about those rough schools, like the uh, train, like for troubled teens. Now they call yeah. it like troubled teens survivors. If you were like went to one of those schools, like Paris Hilton went to one, and they would like they like kidnap people out of their beds to like the parents didn't tell them they were like going to those schools and the places would like come in and take them in the middle of the night and then they would like wake them up in the middle of the night and just like you know what i mean like do all these horrible things to them and like those places it's like you're accidentally making a a, a horrible you know environment while trying to make a better one (laughs) yeah yeah i don't know Sorry about that, guys. That one's a little darker, maybe, than people even realize. I don't know. But at least a lot of it was unfounded, right? I mean, you're glad to know that it's not like it was real. But yeah, it's definitely very, it was definitely very damaging to everyone involved. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, I I can't imagine. No victimless cl- crime here. Yeah, so think twice before you perp- perpagate? propagate rumors. I don't know. <laughs> before you just say something, you know, that you see on a headline or whatever. Because it might not be true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It might be innocent people. Ugh. Damn. Well, 
will next week be any better? <laughs> ah, oh we'll God. see. We're doing, <sighs> I guess, a not super Valentine'sy episode, <sighs> uh, but it is going to be, <laughs> I guess, like love related true crime. So, like lovers <laughs> or. I might try and find a, a love triangle, fucked up love Gone triangle wrong. or something. Yeah, maybe. Twisted we'll see. romance. Yeah. Um, should, what was I going to say? Yeah, no, should be fun. <laughs> should say always. Uh, I don't know. No, I think it'll be good. I haven't picked a case yet, but now that we Neither got this one I. in the bag, there's yeah. so many. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... Uh, m- <laughs> like most of true crime is like love motivated even oh if it's God. fucked up right yeah and whether it's romantic love or like honor killings because you purportedly love your family so much that you oh love i them hate to that be... yeah oh i know I, I don't know if i could talk about ones like that no. they're rough yeah but anyway we'll find something and we'll Mm-hmm. We'll find a way to make it uh, lighthearted in any way we can. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll try our best. Uh, they come here for the murders. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Well, in the meantime, keep it cryptic. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Castles and Cryptids. We love all our listeners and appreciate every subscriber, every new review, every listen, rate, and download. Our music is by Kobe Off Air, and our cover art is by Antonio Garcia. We are also a proud member of Darkcast Network, where you can find the best and spookiest of all indie podcasts. Follow us on social media, where we are at Castles and Cryptids on mostly all of the things, now including TikTok. Check out our bonus content on Patreon, cryptid clashes, video minisodes of your hosts making asses of themselves, ask me anything, quizzes, other special episodes, and more. Starting at just $2 a month, you can get one to two extra episodes, depending on your level. We produce, edit, and research everything ourselves, and any support you can lend helps us to keep it cryptic. Well, all our longtime listeners will definitely know that uh recording a podcast is not always easy (laughs) no no so uh you you better believe like when we find something we like that we're gonna probably stick to it and not look for anything else um so yeah that's one of the reasons why i love zencaster uh when we tried it we were like okay finally i wanted to have the video and it's what up to 4k video which is yeah and cool i can see every pour on kelsey no i'm just kidding (laughs) i hope not (laughs) but it's great video and like just really easy on this one so like once we stopped recording on our our phones i just i was like yeah this is the this is the one for us so even though sometimes our computers fuck up it always <laughs> comes through for us in the end because uh, we've never lost like a recording, knock on wood. And anytime we've had to use it, it's just been really great and really easy. And everything's just recorded when we wanted it to, which is, you know, it's a lot uh, to ask for when you podcast as much as we do. <laughs> yeah. It's nice that each of us has our own separate audio recording that you can download and edit. So it makes (laughs) when one of us is doing something (laughs) or has something, it's easy. You can edit that out even with the other person was talking because you have two separate tracks that you can edit. Yeah, it's one of the reasons we love Zencaster. Definitely. It makes it a lot easier. And the audio quality is also a lot better uh, than any of the other uh, programs we tried using in the past. Yes, it is the best. So go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code cryptic and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. 
We want you to have the same easy experience as we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Keep it cryptic. Well, all our longtime listeners will definitely know that uh, recording a podcast is not always easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. So uh, you, you better believe like when we find something we like that we're going to probably stick to it and not look for anything else. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I love Zencaster. Uh, when we tried it, we were like, okay, finally, I wanted to have the video and it's what up to 4k video which is pretty yeah. effing cool i can see every pore on kelsey no i'm just kidding <laughs> i hope not <laughs> but it's great video and like just really easy on this one so like once we stopped recording on our our phones so i just i was like yeah this is the this is the one for us so even though sometimes our computers fuck up it always <laughs> comes through for us in the end because uh we've never lost like a recording knock on wood and anytime we've had to use it it's just been really great and really easy and everything's just recorded when we wanted it to which is you know it's a lot uh to ask for when you podcast as much as we do <laughs> yeah it's nice that each of us has our own separate audio recording that you can download and edit. So <laughs> it makes when one of us not, is not us. doing something <laughs> or has something, it's easy. You can edit that out even with the other person was talking because you have two separate tracks that you can edit. Yeah, it's one of the reasons we love Zencaster. It definitely, it makes it a lot easier. And the audio quality is also a lot better uh, than any of the other th uh, programs we tried using in the past. Yes, it is the best. So go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code cryptic and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same easy experience as we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Keep it cryptic.